Good morning. Good morning. We're very happy to have you all here this morning. Thank you for joining us on our first Sunday communion since March. So, and folks at home, thank you for joining us as well. I want to thank Kathy, who's doing our media this morning, and to all of you who helped to set up this morning. Uh, and the the uh, Sanctuary Return Committee that continues to be here early and late and meet to make sure that everything flows smoothly. So thank you again to everyone who's been part of finding our way back here during this time and going forward. Good morning again. This is such great weather. We deserve this wonderful cooler, drier weather. So we have our offering plates at um, both the front and back door, as we did last week. And also, um, if you have any extra, we'd really appreciate donations to the Deacons Fund. Um, we've used that money, we feel very wisely, but um, it's gone down a great deal. So again, if you have extra, we'd be very happy to have donations for the Deacons Fund. invited to remain seated or to rise for this morning's call to worship. You are also invited to pray silently or gently and softly from behind your mask. Now please join us. This is an excerpt from Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still, I'll rise. And so do we rise, in spirit and in the company of one another, living rooms, oil wells, sassiness, and all, and let us worship God together. You're now invited to be seated or remain seated as we listen to Sean sing this morning's opening hymn, Draw the Circle Wide from Sing Prayer and Praise Hymnal, number 123. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the
the circle wide. God, the still point of the circle, around whom all creation turns, nothing lost but held forever in God's gracious arms. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's call. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us, open every door. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Once more, you are invited to remain seated or to rise for our unison prayer. You are also invited to pray silently or gently and softly from behind your mask. Let us pray. Rising like the bread soon to be broken, our hearts rise as well, knowing broken too. And as bread sustains us, lifts us, God's love fills the air. Rise into the meal we share, the healing we embrace, and the love, the love, the love. We rise together. The assurance of God's love. I just look at you. And I know that you look toward one another and see more, see into the hearts, the history that we share, the times that we've been together this time, and so much more. And the journey we've been on now, before and now, the hope we continue to have, the absolute indefatigable courage and determination to get through the day and on to the next. Our source whether we directly think about it or not, I think is God's love. Each day is an assurance of that. Each one of us is an assurance of that. The gifts that Sean brings to us, the presence that you bring here today, those of you at home who watch now or will watch later, all are assurance of God's love. How could we be more blessed And so now, from the top of your lungs, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> from the top of your hearts, embrace that love. Put a circle around it, a wide circle around it. 
and then bring it close and let it form into a heart that we share with each other. And may the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40, from Psalms for Praying. Help us to know, O oh teacher, the path to follow. Lead the way, and we will come. In your love is the power to calm the storms of adversity. Show us the power of your forgiving love. Oh, that we might learn to bless others selflessly, to be a silent benediction. Incline our hearts to love consciousness and not to gain. Turn our eyes from the world's temptations and birth us into new life. The second reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10 from the Inclusive Bible. Owe no debt to anyone except the debt that binds us to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you have fulfilled the law. The commandments are all summed up in this one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love never wrongs anyone. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. finished planting for the season and now we make our way to Pasco Washington to see our distant relations on our once a year vacation We took two buses and a train to get to this one. As long as we don't drive, that's all right within our creed. When people stare at us, we're taught to look away. But it's hard not to wonder what they see. Singing with a stranger, singing with a stranger, singing with a stranger from the false world. Singing with a stranger, singing with a stranger, Singing with a stranger from the false world. The Gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 20 from the Inclusive Bible. If your sibling should commit some wrong against you, go and point out the error but keep it between the two of you. If your sibling listens to you, you have won a loved one back. If not, try again 
but take one or two others with you so that every case may stand on the word of two or three witnesses. If your sibling refuses to listen to them, refer the matter to the church. If they don't listen to the church, then treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. So if I had not been crushed by sadness before in my life, these days would be more difficult. All in all, my spirit, my level of optimism, and even my energy are still pretty good. And I'm grateful for that. And at times when the spirit or the energy or the optimism seems to slip, and I bring it up in conversation to friends, the response is sometimes, well, you know, you are getting older. No response, thank you very much, would have been better than that. And it's really not just biological aging, at least not always. Certain times of upheaval can require enormous energy and a vigilance to stay in touch with my spirit, my optimism, my good energy, and positivity, along with prayer and meditation, and the other things I do to stay centered, I actively need to curate what gets to me, inside of me. In other words, I have to manage the flow of information, activities, people, places, things, media. And through it all, I am grateful that my gratitude is always there. I am grateful that my gratitude is always there, even when it's tough. But holding on to gratitude takes practice as well, at least for me. Sometimes I make a gratitude list and carry it around with me, just a few things so that I don't forget, so that I can be grateful no matter what. Because for me, I've discovered that it is in fact gratitude that lifts me up, that helps me rise, sing to a stranger, bring the circle close, even when fending off what I consider often to be constructed confusion and chaos meant to mess me up dull in me. Let's make a vow not to get dull. All in favor? Quietly. You may have seen this picture on, in Thursday's New York Times, the science section. This is what's known as a dead leaf praying mantis. And that is what's called a startled response. When startled, this creature displays an amazing and equally startling response to threats. One might say an overwhelming response. And to a predator, it can be very effective. They just scurry away. And to those of us who are not predators and observe this evolutionary response, it is startling in the direction of wondrous, absolutely wondrous. It is our human design that makes it possible for us to be startled into protection and into wonder. It's amazing when you think about it. Our ability to be startled needs to be cared for, along with the rest of our human design, especially now, for me, maybe you, what affects my startle the most? Kathy, you can go to the next slide, the blank slide. What affects my startle the most is overload. Anybody identify with that? Too much of work, of data, 
of worry, of dissonance, of news, of fake news, of confusion, of economic insecurity, of our own inhumanity and injustice toward one another. Hypocrisy is a self-serving practice, the blurring of ethics and principles and language and behavior. The list goes on. It can be overwhelming, overloading. And the potential effect? Things that used to startle don't so much. Things that used to lift the spirit in wonder don't so much. If we're not careful. If we don't curate and control the inflow of these and other stresses, we can find ourselves dis distancing from the possibilities and the visions for change. We can unexplainably feel saddened now and then, discouraged even, and if we overcompensate by being overly vigilant, we can find ourselves needing to take sides, girding up for battle, always in a defensive mode, always ready for the next fight or the next catastrophe, all at the very least of provocations. Maybe this one? But we all must find our way through this. We all have our own way. Some we do together, but we've got to find our way through it. And so we have to know that we're going through it to figure out a way. And there is another perspective to all of this, a lens, you know. And as I said last week, that is why we are here in congregational life together. Our faith and our beliefs help to keep the startle alive and much more in place. Our faith traditions can obstruct a post-belief movement where faith and religion are badges of prosperity and power. Instead, it can help us to stay on track together. And as hard as all of this is, and for all that it is to ponder, I am aware of the startling gratitude I have just for being alive in this time where we are part, like it or not, of momentous change. Even as the task seems overwhelming, our faith in God and the teachings we hold dear have the power to overwhelm back. Let's overwhelm back with love. That's our task, I think. Overwhelmed back from startle to startle, from refusing to accept behaviors and policies that harm, to embrace actions that startle people with love, compassion, mercy, and the God within us, Emmanuel, not as a prop, but as a sign of who we truly, 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 truly are and hope to be. Let us be a silent benediction, the psalmist says, a blessing to others. And that doesn't mean don't be engaged. It means let every thought and prayer and action come from the silent, intensive power of love in us. Benedicire, wishing well. Benediction comes from that. Wishing well, blessings from one to the other, from within to the other. Namaste. And then what to do when someone is wrong in opposition to the law and refuses to aright themselves. Now Matthew's reading this morning is culturally based in its response to this question, as are all the readings and writings in the ancient texts. They are culturally based to their time. But it says, if you try and try, no matter what you do, and others just won't change, then treat them ultimately as a Gentile or a tax collector. Well, now that sounds pretty biased. That doesn't sound too welcoming or inviting. Until we remember how we treat those who are just not there yet, as the tax collectors and the Gentiles were. We don't judge them. Judge their actions, yes, who they are, not our job. We give them their due, 
As hard as that may be, we respect the family member because that's who we are. And we treat them as Gentiles. Those who have yet come to believe during Matthew's time. We pray for them with love and prayer. and We leave a door open for them to follow when and if they are ready. And then we move on. It is a gospel message that is a bit startling in itself, really. It's challenging and wondrous, faithful and effective, empowering and deeply principled. And it is faithful to be talking about all these things here, in church, here. It is why we are here. It is not a political thing. It is a loving thing. It is not political to demand to uncage and stop separating immigrant families. It is loving. It is not political to say black lives matter. It is loving. It is not political to call for respect for those who have sacrificed and served and continue to do so for this country. It is loving. It is not political to complete a full and robust census and to demand one. It is loving. It is not political to say, vote. It is loving. And if it is loving, it is just. If it is loving, it is the fulfillment of the law, God's law. And if it is loving, it is a startling thing to behold indeed. Overwhelm back, friends, with love. Unchained, unfettered, undeterred, unconditional love. That's the law. Starting as it may be, be startled and be here. This is the time we pray. So in your hearts, who startles you? Who startles you into prayer? Who startles you with joy? Who fills your circle? Who do you sing to? Known or unknown? What do you bring with you this morning? In your heart. Let us hold these prayers that you have and those of you at home for a moment in silence as we prepare to pray. Hear these prayers, dear God, in all the ways we know you. Hear the joys we share, the sorrows we have, the concerns. Help us to remain aware and startled at the very promise that you hear it all. And guide us as we go forward. Remind us that there is no mask between you and us. And so when we pray, as Jesus taught his disciples to pray from behind a mask, it goes out into the world and into hearts from ours to those who join us. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples as you learn to pray it. Say quietly, Greater God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, my And so as he did many times, Jesus sat down with the disciples. This time, we're told he knew something was about to happen. He knew good trouble, and he knew there was bad trouble ahead. But he didn't stop. He set his face toward where he needed to go. And he went there. And he didn't forget to sit down and enjoy a meal with his friends and his disciples. And so he did this that night. And when they were together, he took the bread and he looked out at them and he thought how he loved them, how they loved him, even though they didn't get everything he was trying to teach them. And he broke the bread. And he said to them, listen, when you sit down and you have a meal, whenever you sit down with others, remember me. Maybe you'll forget me during the day, but every time you break bread, every time you have a meal, think of me. And think of what I have done for you. And remember what I am about to do. And then do the same in memory of me, as best you can. And when you finish the meal, as I bless you, bless one another and with the cup, as you lift the cup in benediction, as you look at each other, let this, let this drink be what powers us, fills us, flows through our veins, the love, the courage, the justice, the memories, and the trust in me as I trust in God. When you drink this cup, when you eat this meal, do these things in remembrance of me. Always. I am always with you. And so, knowing the communion goes beyond any form or shape or any words you may be used to hearing for the institution of the sacrament or those that may be a little bit different. We share communion with one another today. The packets that you have, if you wish to do so, you can take off the film on the top and inside is a host. The bread of life.
the cup of benediction, the cup of blessing. Let us give thanks for this meal together. Jeannie is going to bring us the benediction and the sending forth. As the school bells ring this week, we ask this blessing for our students, parents, and teachers. Dear Heavenly Protector, thank you for the unique gifts of every child as they transition from summer into a new school year. Fill each student with fresh enthusiasm and a heart that is excited to learn and grow. Cover them with a feeling of love and kindness toward each other. Give them confidence and courage and equip them with the ability to persevere through these unpredictable times. We ask for your calming presence and guidance for their parents. Please bless their teachers with wisdom, patience, understanding, and a heart to serve as they all embark on their journey together. Jesus, inspire these young people to be all the best that they can be. In God's name we thank you. Amen.